Hello from Texas. I'm going to read you some 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, I'm going to start in verse 13. Because we are upon the rapture of the church. It's going to happen soon. Oh, uh... Antichrist Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, is meeting with Pope Francis, we think the false prophet, for three days. And I want their, I wonder what their little googly, little wicked, little deceptive little minds will be talking about together for three days and that's strange and did you know that when Emmanuel Macron was um, 12 he <clears throat> was baptized uh, in the Catholic religion and uh, he was raised by atheists that's not strange enough okay here we go first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. That's Jesus coming in the clouds to rapture the church. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first so those that are in graves that are buried that um passed away that believed in the lord jesus christ they will rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up caught up wake up church remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words are those words comforting they absolutely are are we living in a wicked deranged woke crazy unimaginable I couldn't imagine this world 20 years ago that we live in are we living in a nutty, crazy, delusional, uh, transhumanism? You know, I, I, I don't even have words to say it. I really don't. Uh, to describe the world that we live in. But I think, uh, let's, I think Peter does. Let's go to Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, Jesus asked P Peter, Peter, do you love me? He asked Peter three times. He asked Peter, do you love me? Okay, let's see. Where's Peter, Peter? Okay, let me read Second Peter. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So Jesus is waiting for that one last person to get on the ark, to get saved, so he can catch everybody that's saved up. I'm sorry, my glasses are kind of big. Those are my uh, 
magnifying glasses because my eyes are bad. Okay, where where is um is it second Peter? Is this your second Peter? Um here it is. Here's uh, 2 Peter. Um, let me start with verse 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. A lot of false preachers, shame on you, sending people to hell, who pivotally shall bring in the damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil evil spoken of and though covetedness shall they for uh, finged words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. What did, what did uh, Jesus tell us about his coming? That it would be in the, that we would currently be living in the days of Noah. And if you read in Genesis 6, kind of looks like the world we're living in right now. And that's why Jesus is coming. If you don't get saved and you're left behind, that's your own fault. And it's going to be horrific. It is going to be horrific. You don't want to be um, left behind. Um, here, here's uh, Hebrews 6. For it is impossible for those who who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God. Is This is a good word of God right here. This is the living word. So read it. Read it. Have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, to re renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God let me see what else where's, where's my the wind's blowing out here so excuse me if I'm kind of here goes um, uh, here goes some second Thessalonians um 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word or by letter as from us, as that day of Christ, the rapture, is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except their coming a fallen uh, come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition now Emmanuel Macron they're meeting in some Rome Italy for some peace meeting with um, 
a bunch of of people. Uh, Listen to Jeffrey Greider's podcast for today, uh, October 24th. Go to his website, Now the End Begins, and click on the podcast for today because he uh, has a link there of uh, this meeting with Emmanuel Macron. Now we think Emmanuel Macron is the man of sin, uh, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as he so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, the rebuilt Jewish temple, showing himself that he is God. Lie, lie, lie. He is not God. He is Antichrist. Okay? He's going to say he's God, but he's not God. But God Almighty is going to defeat that evil, wicked son of perdition. Just like a, with a breath. Going to be gone. Just like that. He's going to give him a little time, a little seven years, a little measly seven years. A little do his little thing to see who wants to follow him and who wants to worship him. But if you're left behind, you better open up, a find a King James Bible and you better get in the book of Revelation because that's what's coming upon the earth and do not receive a mark in your right hand or in your forehead and do not worship the beast because it's coming i mean it's it's here so the rapture of the church is going to happen very soon i still believe it's going to be this year i could be wrong could be 2023 but I, it's coming soon. I told my grandson when he was here last week, I said, I said that the raptures, I feel that it's going to happen within 12 months from now. Because he said, Grandma, is it going to happen like in 20 more years? And I said, no, baby. It's probably going to happen within 12 months. That's how close we are. The signs, the prophecies of the Bible are, are, are actually happening today, yesterday, today. It's going to happen tomorrow. Is coming fast. For when, here goes 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh, cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night so the people that are just going about their daily partying lives and going in bars like there's nothing strange going on. They're going to be in for a rude awakening when they're sitting at the bar drinking a beer in the day, in the evening. Some go to morning, some go at morning or at midnight. And all of a sudden, all chaos takes place because that's what's going to happen when millions and millions and millions of people disappear from the face of this earth. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So that tells me there's going to be a worldwide earth shaking for the dead and for the dead to rise first to come out of the grave. I don't know that, but it kind of makes sense. Um, remember when Jesus was on the cross and there was a big earthquake and everything turned darkened. You know what? There, it might be just like that when the rapture happens. Um, okay, where was I? But let us who are of the day be sober. 
be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. All of you post-tribulation rapture people. This verse is for you. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and adm admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their works sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them. Here goes. Warn them that are un Ruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything. Thing, give thanks. Give thanks to God for every single thing. If you have a piece of toast on your plate, be grateful. If you have a roof over your head, whether it's a shed, a shack, whatever, be grateful. If you are living in the Philippines and you live in a tin shack, be grateful. Be grateful for everything and do not ever, ever blame God for any bad things that happen to you. Don't. We live in a fallen world. If you want to blame somebody, blame the enemy, the devil, the liar, the deceiver. You can blame him. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in, G in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The first epistle unto Thessalonians was written from Athens. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Keep your head up. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Coming back. Keep your head up. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Let's see. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, Chapter 1. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God un gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who, who bears record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. 
Are we living on a day-by-day -day standby of the rapture happening? You better believe it. And that man of sin, if you want my opinion, I think he's already been revealed to the rapture could happen today. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. So it says here in verse uh, 7 of chapter 1 of the book of Revelation, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am a mouth alpha and omega the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it, send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Cymera, and unto Pergamos, and to Tyrrhenia, and to Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. We are, la we are living in the Laodicea. That's the last church. And, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle, and his head and his hairs were like, were white. His head and his hairs were white as wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of, of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a, a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead when we see Jesus we're gonna be like that and I and he laid and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and and have the keys of hell and of death write the the things which thou hast seen and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, 
and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Yeah, um, let me talk to you for a minute here. My back's hurting. Oh, I'm out of breath. Just reading gets me out of breath. Um, today is cloudy, gloomy, kind of like an eerie, quiet, windy. I also want to tell you, if you participate in Halloween, stop. Don't do it. There's so much wickedness going on on this earth that if you participate in Halloween, you are opening doors to the enemy to come in. I don't put up any Halloween stuff. I don't care about candies. You can go to the store and buy candies all you want. You don't need to do it just during a weird, wicked day. That day belongs to the enemy. You belong to Jesus Christ. Don't participate in Halloween. Don't. Don't watch any Halloween movies. Don't let turn off your lights. Leave the doors and everything closed. Don't don't even look at all the costume people. Just leave that alone. That's my advice for you today. I love you family. I'll see you in the sky real soon. <laughs>